first I'm going to try to depuff myself because I am very, very puffy this morning. I'm going to do these little eye gels and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> To another vlog. I just finished doing my skincare and I used up two products. This is like a live empties. <laughs> I really like both of these. I would repurchase one. I wouldn't repurchase the other one and that's solely based on packaging. This is the Indeed Labs Mineral Booster. It contains zinc and magnesium and nourishes the skin. It helps the skin heal faster and all that good stuff. But the consistency is like a lightweight lotion. The consistency is just too thick for it to be in this pipette dispenser. This should be in a squeezy tube or like a pump or something. It was just really hard to gauge how much product I was dispensing. It was hard to get product out. And then the other thing is Saatchi Skin, the pigmentation corrector. I really enjoy this. Saatchi Skin is a new skincare company founded by one of my dear Instagram friends, Farah. Her Instagram account is Beamwonder. She did not send me the product to, to review or anything like that. I bought it with my own money. I also bought her acid exfoliating product, which I really enjoy. Because I'm also using Retin-A, I can only use that acid exfoliating product once or twice a week because otherwise my skin can get really irritated because it's you know it's a lot of hardcore ingredients happening but I really enjoy that product as well in terms of foundation I'm actually just gonna do a little tinted moisturizer today so I'm doing the Sicily tinted moisturizer which is part of my project pan and then I'm gonna do a little little dibble of the Auric glow lust maybe like quarter of a pump this won't be the most long-lasting base. I just want like a nice, fresh, lightweight base today. Mom call me doll. This like this makes me feel like I'm 25 again. <laughs> it's it's really comforting and sweet and gentle and floral but a little zesty it's, it's really really pretty then for a little OOTD we've got a black cashmere sweater on top of this old and other stories dress I love to just throw on a t-shirt or a sweater over top and that way I'm able to use it in the spring and the fall as well my shoes are the Glynn sandals by Vince which have been you know delegated as my current house shoes. And then a better look at what the makeup looks like in real life, just like, I guess, a lighter weight version of my full-on, slightly more glam look that I shared in my last makeup routine video. So this is like the weekend version of that, you know? En route to see Pepper's boyfriend. Big Larry. It's been a while since we've given a Larry update on the vlog. Larry has now quadrupled in size since <laughs> you've last seen him. Still full of love. He's a big boy, he's adorable, and we're excited to see him. So I made a big batch of egg salad that we can have for the week. I made a loaded vegetable sweet potato stew. I made banana bread because we had some overripe bananas. And then now for dinner, we're making salmon on a grill outside because it's, it's just warm enough that we can go outside and turn the barbecue on. So we're doing some, some grilled salmon, some grilled asparagus, and then I just boiled some potatoes just until they're fork tender and I'm sauteing them with some onion, hot peppers, turmeric, and salt and pepper. And hopefully it should be good. Oh, I'm going to be honest. I'm gonna give <laughs> my- I just followed Josh's recipe. <laughs> Michael made pickles. Another, you know, to go on theme with our big food weekend. We've got some, uh, I guess I can give you some uh, fancy. Oh, Homemade pickle footage right here. Look at these delicious dill pickles, homemade, organic. Moment of truth. 
tastes like they're missing something. Not bad. I do love a pickle. I will eat it. I'm sure we'll eat them all, but I feel like the recipe will need a little bit of tweaking. These are my potatoes and my burnt onions. I like to kind of let it overcook a little bit in some bits because I do like those crunchy parts. Can you be patient? Can you be patient, please? So we can talk to the camera? Drop it. Drop it, please. Stay. Good girl. Yes, very good girl. Stay. Our furry highness will only be brushed with the finest of human grade brushes. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is a dry bar brush. This used to be my brush, but it's now Pepper's brush. It's the only brush she enjoys being brushed with. Um, I do have a slicker brush that I use for her if she has any knots in, in her fur, but for daily maintenance, this is what I use. But now she really wants to play. Okay, okay, I will stop talking about the brush and I'll play with you. Getting ready. I added some waves in my hair in an attempt to make it look a bit more alive, but now I just look like a pyramid. <laughs> Auric Glow Lust L'Encom Tanti Doll. It just did my Sicily corrector. I've been just doing this under the eyes um, just for a quick one and done type of under eye product. I find that it just gives me just enough coverage and green blue undertone cancellation. Today's face is evidently filled with Project Pan products. <laughs> the blush that keeps on going. Tarte Exposed. I feel like whenever people talk about Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate, they only ever talk about the shade part. This is Intensity 2. I'm still able to make it work. I usually like to mix this with my Clarins bronzer in the summertime, but I'm going to try to just use the highlight part today. Oh, it's really pretty. I went a bit too overboard with it. <laughs> it's a damp sponge, but I've seen some makeup artists just use a dry sponge with it as well, and it seems to work. But it's actually a really beautiful highlight. Look at that. Chantecai Zebra on my eyelids. I just did bronzer in the crease. This eyeshadow is just so pretty, and the packaging is just so beautiful. It's one of those makeup products that just brings you joy. I actually ordered a second one to do a giveaway on my Instagram so make sure you follow me on Instagram hopefully somebody will win this and this eyeshadow will make them just as happy as it made me it's all about the little things right I look like I'm about to do an next expedition i'm wearing i'm wearing a posture corrector i saw mariana hewitt uh mentioned this on instagram a few weeks ago so i ordered one because sitting down more than usual not walking as much as usual um just kind of being head first in my phone and in my computer screen for the last year has definitely taken its toll on my back and trying to prevent the hunchback, trying to work on my posture. So I've been doing more yoga and trying to do some back strengthening exercises. We are hopefully going to, uh, I mean, we're signed, signed up for a wait list to get vaccinated because all adults are eligible for a COVID vaccine. So keeping our fingers crossed for that. Here is a pickle update. So since the original batch was mediocre, Michael thought that he could do better, so. 
The second batch is so much more tasty. It just needed more flavor. Would you like to show our internet friends your new name tag? It says Ball is Life on it because Ball is indeed life. this oversized white cotton shirt. This is from Arquette. It's old, but I mean, Arquette, H&M, and other stories are all under the same brand umbrella, so there are lots of options available. This necklace is vintage, quite literally. It's from my grandmother, and it's the type of jewelry that I really love pairing with more casual pieces. It kind of elevates it a bit. Normally, if I wasn't working from home, I would be tucking this in or I'd be doing like a partial tuck or I saw this other styling hack where like you leave the first, like the last few buttons of the blouse undone and then you just pin the back so that you get this opening at the front. It's gonna be at home today, so I'm just gonna let this flow freely, but I'm wearing my Citizens of Humanity jeans. These are the Charlotte High Rise Street, and I actually did a blog post on my all-time favorite designer jeans. Spoiler alert, this is on the list, but if you're interested in the high-end denim that I've tried and my thoughts and my top three favorites, I'm going to link that blog post in, um, in the description box. That's what I'm wearing, and now wearing shoes because this is like my adaptation, work from home adaptation. If I was going to work, I would wear this tucked in, maybe a belt, and I would wear my um, chunky loafers. I'm feeling good today. I really actually really love this look, and I love white shirts with jeans and a red lip. It's one of my go-to combinations. Finally went and got my hair done yesterday, and I feel like a new person. I love it so much. I just did the same thing um, that... I just asked for the same thing that she did last time because I loved the way that it turned out. Alright, so I did my workout, I washed my hair, and now it's time to put away all my winter my winter clothing items and my winter shoes. Just in the process of putting some leather conditioner on my boots and putting them back into uh, back into storage. In the springtime, even though technically I you know there are some outfits I could wear with boots, I'm just not I'm just so over boots by the time spring comes. I basically just take out the clothes that I'm not, that I'm not, they're not seasonally appropriate anymore. I put them in my storage. I have under the bed storage. I just have some bins that I store under the bed. Um, and that's it, switch out shoes. I give all my shoes a good clean. I try to do some leather conditioner on them. Not sure if you can tell on camera, but this is the clean conditioned boot. And then this is the unconditioned boot. This is my go-to leather conditioner. It's like a cleaner and conditioner in one. I use it on handbags. I use it on my shoes. I just use a microfiber cloth. I dip it in the cream and I apply it, wait a few minutes. Then I take another clean microfiber cloth and just kind of wipe away any excess and it does a great job. Hello friends, quick intermission from my big closet switchover slash I need to clean this up because it's giving it's making me nervous. You know when you you feel optimistic and you feel like, yeah, I can do this. I'm going to reorganize all this stuff and then you take everything out and you create a big mess and then you realize what you've done and you're just overwhelmed. Hopefully I'll be able to finish all this stuff. Today is my first dose of the COVID vaccine and I'm very very excited. So, I thought I would show you my big exciting OOTD today for the occasion. Wearing my finest short sleeve shirt. Unfortunately, I don't have any cold shoulder top <laughs> anymore. That would have been a perfect fashion choice for my vaccine appointment today. <laughs> but anyway, just wearing this plain black t-shirt. I'm wearing white jeans. These are from Rachel Comey. They're the Slim Legion jeans in the color Dirty White. It's this really pretty creamy white color. They're cropped 
straight leg jean. Has a little bit of stretch to it, so they're really comfortable. And uh, for shoes, I'm wearing my The Row loafers. This is their maiden voyage. And I did an unboxing when I first bought them a few months ago. So very excited to wear them. It's beautiful outside. The bulk of every vlog has become some type of skincare routine slash skincare update. I hope you don't mind. I personally love skincare. It's one of my top favorite things. How cute are these clips? I found them on Etsy. I'm really into this hair clip revival because you can just put your hair up um, easily and quickly with less damage and it still looks really cute because you've got a fun, fun little clip. Um, I'm going to try and find the seller that I got them from. I've been using the um, Youth to the People. I um, love the fact that this is refillable. So that's with my cleanser. Then for vitamin C, I have been using this. This is the IS Clinical Super Serum Advanced. It's very much a typical L-ascorbic acid vitamin C serum texture. It's not as oily as uh, like the SkinCeutical CE Ferulic. Next up I go in with my little hydrating serum this is the Chantecaille hyaluronic acid serum there's no scent in the IS clinical serum by the way there's like a very very faint hot dog scent but not nearly as strong as the SkinCeuticals this has like a faint rose scent I go in with eye cream and I've been using this this bougie old thing this is the La Mer Eye Concentrate. It's beautiful. The texture is probably the best texture in an eye cream type of product. Comes with this fun little tool. Is it worth the price though? I don't think that the results of this eye concentrate will be dramatic, but it does feel incredibly beautiful and very, very, it's the perfect balance of hydrating and moisturizing. It's very silky. I mean, I just started using it, so I can't really tell you if it's doing anything in terms of, you know, fine line reduction or helping with dark circles, but this tool is nice because you can kind of do a little lymphatic drainage with it and it's nice and cooling. A missed opportunity would have been to make these magnetic so that you can just kind of rest the applicator on the top without it falling out. I got this in PR and I'm very intrigued by it. It's the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Barrier Cream. It looks like cottage cheese. It's like a very fluffy, airy, it's really weird. There's like air in it. Once you massage it onto the skin, it just feels really wet. Like it's a very lightweight, wet, hydrating kind of feel. There's like a slight silicone slip to it as well. There's no scent, you know, First Day Beauty does formulate its stuff to be sensitive, skin friendly, so they don't use synthetic fragrances or anything like that. Yeah, the texture is actually quite nice. It's just it's just odd when you look at it in in the in the pot. It just kind of looks like it looks like something's not right. <laughs> then after that, I'm gonna go in and apply my sunscreen and my makeup, and I will catch you later. And just like that, with the magic of makeup, I am ready to go. I'm going to go hang out with my mom today for a bit. Michael is over at our office space. We have some inspections today, so he's holding down the fort over there and I thought I would take Pepper over to my mom's for a change of scenery. She's got a lot of beautiful outdoor space where Pepper can run around. Thought I would share with you what I'm wearing today. I was actually very inspired by Camille Cherrier. She's one of my favorite fashion influencers but I saw this outfit that she had posted and I mean it's nothing groundbreaking but I really loved it with the Prada loafers leggings 
a chunky striped top and a long coat. And then she had her little Hermes Kelly bag. My striped sweater is the opposite of hers, but I thought I thought it would kind of do do the job. And then I'm also wearing the Prada loafers, but I'm now wearing leggings today. It's, it's just cold and I kind of wanted something a bit more cozy. So I'm just wearing gray jeans, just long gray straight leg jeans. My sweater is from Zara, but it's from last year. I don't think they make it anymore, but there are very similar options out on the internet. This is a long padded trench coat from Uniqlo, also about a year old. It was from their Uniqlo U collection. So I'm wearing my Prada loafers. These are my most worn pair of shoes. I love them so much. They were definitely a splurge, but very worth it for me because I have worn them all the time. I just find that they add that touch of polish and refinement and toughness. The good thing is, since these were so popular, you can find alternatives at different price points. I can definitely find some really cute alternatives for you and link them in the description box for like a little something fun. These fishnet stockings. I kind of like the juxtaposition between the chunky loafer, the slouchy jeans, and then you've, you've got like a touch of sexy feminine fishnet tight in there. I, I, I kind of like the, the juxtaposition going on here. I guess this would be chicer with black leggings, but I'm just, I just don't feel like wearing leggings today, to be honest. I feel like wearing something slouchy. So that's my take on this outfit of the day. I'm going to head on over to my mom's, let Peppa run around for a bit, and I will catch you later. Today is Saturday. I've actually lost count how many Saturdays we've covered in, in this vlog. I usually just vlog on the weekends, but it's been like Groundhog Day every day, right? I'm going to get a Clear and Brilliant treatment today. Clear and Brilliant is a non-ablative laser and it's supposed to be like a good entryway into the world of, of lasers and professional skin treatments and stuff like that. I had a phase where for about two years I was getting regular hydrofacials and I was doing microdermabrasion. I tried a bunch of different chemical peels and all that good stuff and I just, I haven't, haven't been doing it obviously for the last three years, maybe even longer. I honestly can't even remember the last time I had a hydrofacial or anything like that. Um, and I do have some skin concerns that no matter how many wonderful topical serums and lotions and potions I use and at-home devices and all that, no matter how many of those things I buy and use, there are some things that I need professional help with. I have acne scarring. I've been using, you know, Retin-A for almost a year. I use really great pigmentation serums that have helped in other areas, but there's, there are just some spots and Clear and Brilliant is supposed to help address that. It's supposed to help with pigmentation, skin texture. Um, also, it's supposed to help with um, some fine lines. It's supposed to help boost collagen a little bit. It seems to be like a nice entryway, preventative, like gentle-ish type of, uh, of laser that's not nothing too intense because I had consultations for, for lasers and stuff like that before and they would always recommend Fraxel to me and Fraxel is, Fraxel, I don't know how much it costs now. At the time, it was like $1,100 to get it done. I would have needed multiple treatments and it's one week of downtime and I just, at the time, I couldn't take a week off of work to let my face crust over. I, I wasn't working in a job where I, where I could work from home at the time. And it was just a different world. I think I think now companies are a lot more... Pepper, you're being very rude. I find it so interesting the, the way the pandemic has shifted our, our work-life balance. In some ways positive, in other ways not so positive. And I'm back. It's been a couple hours since I've been home. Still a little bit red, but it was a really positive experience. I 
I'm excited for the results. Apparently my skin can, can handle a lot of uh, intense, intense, clear and brilliant action. She used the strongest setting. She went multiple times over my areas of concern. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited so far. I, I feel like I, I, my skin texture already looks better. So in terms of pain and discomfort, I would say, I mean, for me on a scale of, of one to 10, this was maybe like a three. Um, I did, she did use a, a topical numbing cream beforehand. And then um, I feel like the most intense stinging sensation was just happening maybe like an hour after the procedure like now like i said it's been about two three hours and i can already feel the discomfort subsiding and it, it just feels my skin just feels tight and like mildly sunburnt but it doesn't really feel too bad and i'll keep you posted on on my journey but i think i'm going to call it call it a vlog here i hope you're doing well and i will catch you in the next one thanks so much for hanging out with me today bye